Hi everyone, um, it's been a while since I've made a video but I thought I would do another beginner taxidermy informational video for you guys um, and I wanted to talk about the different methods that you can use for preservation. So the first method is the traditional mount which is what we've got here and it's also the video that I posted about the rabbit. So, with a traditional mount, you gen generally use the same skin of the animal that you're using. You can be quite creative with this one. So, you can dress them up or um, decorate it with some flowers, put it in a dome, which is what I've done here. Um, you can even put in a little diorama or a terrarium if you would like. Um, so, the options with traditional mounts are endless. And in my opinion, um, they're one of the easier things to do if you know what you're doing in terms of uh, shaping and forming an animal anatomy. So if you know that quite well, you can get something that looks like the real thing. The aim with these ones are to make them look alive. So often they have a bit of motion to them. Or if you wanted to dress them up a little bit sillier, um, you know, give them a bit of personality, you can absolutely do that with a traditional mount. Sort of in the same vein as mounting is tanning, which is where you preserve just the skin of the animal. You don't worry about the bone or the form. Um, lots of people use these as clothing or carpets or um, blankets. Um, you can see they're still quite soft and pliable, um, so they're flexible. You can also make a soft mount uh, using the same sort of techniques as tanning. So tanning involves quite a bit of chemical processes in order to preserve the skin. Um, drying it out takes a couple of weeks to do, um, and then scraping off all the, um, the fat and the tissue from the inside and making that workable also takes a lot of love and care to brush the fur and make sure that there's no skin slippage which is where you lose fur um don't mind this piece it's my very first uh tanning that i've done i haven't done one really since um it's just a little fox that i found it's an old baby boy um on the side of the road but that is tanning if you're wanting to have your pieces as more of a practical sort of use. The second method of preservation is bone preservation. So that is where we just keep the bone. So this guy here is a fallow deer. Um, probably doesn't take as much work as a traditional mount, but it does take a lot longer. So this one probably processed for upwards of six months. Um, so there's a number of chemicals that you have to bathe it in um, and there's a number of things that you have to do in order to get it one looking white and two also um, preserving the bone itself um, so this one here usually starts off with maceration or domestic beetles or you can either bury it in some dirt for a bit and then come back and dig it up later so um, Maceration is just leaving it in some water for a very long time and letting bacteria build up in that water and that bacteria eats away the flesh and the tissue of your specimen. Once you've macerated it, um, you then need to degrease it and then once you've degreased it, you then need to whiten it. Um, so in total, probably about six months of maceration, degreasing and whitening. Um, and then I've just oiled the antlers a little bit on this one as well. Um, and quite often bits and pieces get loose. So I've had to glue in the teeth as well. Um, so that is the second option. The other thing you can do with those are articulate them. So if you're a person who likes jigsaw puzzles, you will enjoy articulation. So when your bones are processing, they all, um, sort of the connective tissues dissolve so you will need to piece them back together. So you get yourself an anatomy book and figure out where all the bones go. And the fun part about that is each bone fits into one specific place. I have not done any um, 
articulations because I just don't have the patience and I'm not that keen on jigsaw puzzles, but people who are, they absolutely love them. All right, the other method of preservation is wet preservation, which is where your specimen will sit in a um, preservation liquid or formula. You can either put the whole animal in there or you can do part of its organs. So uh, we've got some rabbit eyes in there and we've got a little mouse friend in here. So with West Preservation, it's probably the trickiest um, out of the different methods simply because you have to know what you're doing and how to handle the various chemicals that's used. Um, the most common chemical that's used is formaldehyde, which is incredibly um, toxic and caustic. And you probably don't want to mess around with it if you don't know what you're doing. So with that one there, you actually need um, full-on PPE. So I'm talking, you know, chemical resistant gloves and a respirator mask as well as full-on um, clothing protection as well. If you get a little bit on your skin or even in your eye, you'd want to go straight to the hospital. This one here, however, um, this one's been injected with 100% isopropyl alcohol. You can also use ethanol um, or I have heard of um, methylated spirits as well. Um, being one of the chemicals. Um, so there are a few different options that are slightly safer, but you still need to know what you're doing because you're dealing with um, white spirits, but you're also dealing with sharp needles, which is what you need um, in order to preserve the internal organs. So when these are preserved, they do set in the position that you pose them in. Um, so I'll get this little guy out to show you what he kind of looks like. He doesn't change shape. Um, once you take them out. All right, so it's not as fluffy as it might look. Um, it sets um, in the pose that you put them in. So we've got our little friend here. And you can see that the tail has kind of matched how it was um, sitting in the vial. Um, and the rest of him is as well. If you wanted him in a different shape, um, you'd have to pose him that way before he sets um, in the in the preservation fluid. But yes, this is this is our mouse friend, and he stays in the shape that you put him in. You don't really have to do much gory stuff with these ones, but. Um, you do need to, so what happens with these ones is you inject it all over with the preservation liquid, um, making sure to get it into all the organs, all the muscles, all the tissues, um, and that will set it inside, um, which keeps it um, preserved. And then it, it lives in a solution of 70% isopropyl alcohol after it had been sitting in um, the preservation liquid that you injected it with. There are also um, diaphanizations, which actually creates a really cool colorful effect on your specimen. They look really cool with fish, but you can also do them with lots of other animals as well, because um, it actually stains the bones. Um, you can see some photos of stuff that have been done here. I haven't personally had any experience with this one, but I would, but it is something that I would like to learn in the future. Um, but yeah, that's all I have for you today. If you enjoyed this sort of thing, let me know and I'll be happy to do some more um, informational and educational videos. Um, and if you've got any questions as well, leave them down below. Maybe we could do like a Q&A video or something. Um, but anyway, thank you so much for watching. Bye.